Why did the cowboy adopt a dachshund? Because he wanted to get a long little doggy. Hi everyone, Busy Gamer Dad back again. Going to be doing another session gameplay recording here on the Busy Gamer Dad channel. This week we're going to be taking a look at Asgard's Falls Origins. This is a good game. It's a roguelite. I like what they're doing with it. That's why I'm bringing it to you guys. This is a free game, so feel free to pick it up uh, for yourselves. I'll have a link for you guys in the YouTube description should you want to do that. It is a vampire survivor game. I'm not going to say that it's not. It's definitely inspired and drawing heavily from that, but where it differs from Vampire Survivors is what makes it a little bit more interesting because I personally have never played Vampire Survivors. I know I'm in part of that really small, like one percentile at this point in the world where I have just never played it. But anyways, I like what they're going for with the uh, roguelike bullet hell um, mechanic that they have here with the Nordic theme. And I think that's what you guys will enjoy as well. And plus, free you can try it out for a few times and see if it's something worth your salt and time and sweat and maybe pick up the full game when it gets released because that's what the developer is doing this is a tester and a uh, uh, initial release of their ideas as you can see here welcome to as guard oh sorry knock something all right it's uh this is what the developer is doing they're doing a initial release of this origins game and they're going to uh, basically pitch this to a bunch of developers they are looking for the right one for them and they're gonna rebuild the game in a new and improved engine so you can kind of get ahead of the curve and you can see where this game's going and you can actually follow along with it if you wanted to get the early access that is available as well and I will also have a link to the we'll say quote-unquote main page for the developers for this as well so get your foot in on the ground door because this might be really worth your time we're going to go in and we're going to see what uh, this game has in store for us. Now, I have played about an hour of this game, so I know a little bit of it. We'll go over what I have right now. So you have these skill trees that are pretty, you know, utilitarian. They're very straightforward. They augment your play style, definitely. They're not, uh, not bad in any stretch of the imagination. But basically, you know, you have your... Uh, ability augments your fire your ice your lightning then there's a defensive tree and a utility tree i have tried each of these builds i like the uh fire build most of all but the ice build is my second favorite the thunder i haven't really had a good build with the thunder build just yet and uh, i think that's just because i've not hit the right uh, uh upgrades when i played through the game and then you have your defensive tree and you have your utility tree um the perks function exactly as you would think they are you can augment the runes that you can get, or you can augment the uh, abilities that you see come around for you. The physical tree is the difference in that. You'll see that it is much larger, and you have a lot of more freedom when you play through this to unlock a lot more uh, interesting combos, really, is what it comes down to. And I think that's what I'm going to do here. I'm actually going to jump into these two right here. And you can freely respect these just by right clicking. So you're not locked into anything with the skill tree. You can just have fun with it. Currently in the Origins game, there is only Midgard available. You have a bunch of other worlds that will become available later on. You can, But you can upgrade the difficulty quite a bit. Uh, I am not this skilled. I tried this and I died within the first 30 seconds. I was not prepared for what I was getting into. So I'm going to leave it at the lowest setting for our first initial playthrough. And then I might ramp it up a little bit just so you guys can see what that's like. And I hopefully won't embarrass myself too much. Because as you increase in difficulty, you really do need to have some more skill tree uh, nodes unlocked to help adjust the uh, play style. Now you can play this game with controller. I believe. I have not tested that out. I've been having a lot more fun playing this with just mouse and keyboard, though. Runs typically last about 20 to 30 minutes, um, depending on how good or bad you do. And it is exactly what you see here. This is it. I love the pixel graphics. I love the uh, art style. I like the uh, feel of the game. I like the music in the game. This is kind of like a brains off game for me, where I don't have to turn my uh, brain into a factory of like, all right, this number means this, and this goes into that, and then I do this, so I'll do that. You know, this game is actually kind of like a brains off uh, mode for me, and I think that's where I a lot of people will get uh, good usage and mileage out of the game. Now, what do we want to do here? Yidrasil's Pulse, Gungran, and I'm going to butcher these names, so please tell me i'm gun gunnar gunnier it, please tell me in the comments if you speak nordic if i'm butchering the name and how to really pronounce it because i would love to learn uh 
throws spears. Oh, my mouse position three on impact. This uh, hurls a slow moving electrical pulse. I, lot, I want the damage. Let's do the damage. Oh, so that is a giant spear. Got it. Got it. And then it, you see your abilities on cooldown down at the uh, bottom. Oh, and it does a little bit of zone deny. Cool. I like it. Now, this is the second form of upgrades where you can choose a carving. You pick these. You don't have to pick them all. And in some cases, early on, you won't be able to because this is directly related to your uh, experience, your blood knowns, whatever you might want to call it. So you won't be able to pick everything. Unfortunately, we can't even pick anything. And this would have been really nice to have. So I'm just going to end up skipping this and we'll just go for the next. You don't have to take upgrades. There are certain utility nodes that you can get into should you want to that allow you to um, uh, get free rerolls and various other things. Those are in the utility tree. Highly recommend you look at those if you do like playing that way. Um, I'm not smart enough to really delve into it too far. Uh, let's see here. So we have cold damage. Massive pieces of ice drop from this guy. That's a lot of good things i like the random projectiles but i also like having things that are just passive around me let's do since we're kind of going through the throwing build let's do the throwing daggers let's let's have some fun with that they're in random directions i'm fine with it they will auto aim and take out enemies for me perfectly fine by me so this is where it differs in vampire survivors you might notice that i have a smaller playing field than what uh, vampire survivors has as it's pretty much infinite scrolling area you only get locked out of areas by chance of uh hordes around the uh, player or something like that this is a very fixed plateau that we are fighting on we do not have a chance to uh move infinitely in one direction or another um so i'm gonna pick these two and i'm gonna take it yeah i'll take those two because i don't have any ice abilities and i didn't uh didn't really want to take the other one you do have a dodge in this as well. You can dash through enemies. You can pick up more dodges. You can go for dodge builds. That is uh, one of the first successes I had when I played this game. I almost actually beat this game on my first play, um, but I got a little cocky and wasn't sure what was going on. So I wound up uh, walking into uh, some damage. Let's see here, Thor's Wrath. The hammer is really fun. This is, yeah, let's get Thor's hammer just so you guys can see that. We have another projectile. It flies out and comes right back to us. It's actually pretty awesome. Um, you can increase the distance of it, uh, reduce the cooldowns of weapons and uh, skills and abilities, etc. All uh, like you would normally expect in uh, these types of games. So you can go for specific uh, build sets. I don't know what meta would be available for a game like this. It does feel like all the builds are actually relatively powerful in their own right when you get the right... Uh, we'll say, uh, perks that you can pick from. Those apples on the ground, we do not want to pick those up unless we are damaged. You'll see our health bar at the bottom middle. We currently have 300. We can get more if we want to. You can also get more through your skill trees should you want to do that. You'll notice that those little um, blood circles and damage indicators, those are things you want to be mindful of. You want to make sure you're avoiding those as much as possible. I'm going to do the crit chance and I'm going to do the dodge chance here. I don't have any fire things right now. I'm kind of leaning into a lightning build completely. You don't want to, and I am speaking from, we'll say a position of somewhat expertise. You do not want to pigeon yourself into one set of damage. Diversify, do lightning ice, do lightning fire. You can do all one type of damage and that's fine, but the perks that I've been getting are few and far between solely oriented towards just lightning just fire just ice so you want to make sure that you when you look at the perks that you see uh available you're looking at them and saying well i don't have lightning this time around but i did get a ice attack and i do have this lightning perk i can pick because at any given point you can only have a max of five down here at the bottom i'm going to do thor's wrath because then i will be completely and totally in the lightning um mix even though fenrir's claws was a pretty op ability i'm gonna do the lightning wrath because i want to get some bigger uh area effect zone randomness out on the field because that i think will help with wave clear uh especially in the later uh sections of the game you'll notice that on the top you'll have the world level increase that just means exactly what you might think it means the level is getting tougher the bosses or the enemies the fodder is getting stronger you need to be mindful of that you need to be playing accordingly and being aware that you are not going to just walk right through so case in point like i was saying we have chilled chance here 
we don't have anything that is ice oriented, but I don't know, and I don't want to speak uh, ill about what this mechanic does. I don't know if that chill chance translates to the probability of chilling the target, reducing their move a bit. I don't know if that is solely related to just lightning attacks or just fire attacks. Like you have a chance for ignition, you have a chance for bleed. So you have like four realms of damage that you can do. And I don't know if you have to have the, we'll say, catalyst ability to proc that ability. We can certainly try that. I don't have a problem trying that. It's not going to hurt anything. These runs are actually a lot of fun when you get all the upgrades and you just feel like a maniac running around the field destroying people like a true Viking. So I enjoy it quite a bit to just play around. And I think that's why a lot of people will get drawn into this game. Even though you do see that stark uh, uh, comparison to a very similar game so, so i will stop naming said similar game so that you can actually see this game in its own right and enjoy this game for what it is a fun jaunt through viking valhalla now we in our last ability we in our last ability need to be very thoughtful we have a physical attack we have three lightning attacks why don't we go for fire let's do fire because that's going to be a lot of uh uh the, the fire tornado it spins all the way across the field so it's really big damage that spins all the way across. And honestly, I think it's one of the more powerful abilities, especially if you get the right upgrades for the flame tree. And if you get the right upgrades for uh, crit damage, we are going to need another dodge though. We're, dodging in this game is kind of integral. We took our first hit there. We have to be able to spin through the uh, enemies coming at us. So we definitely need to be able to do that. We're going to pick these three. We don't have cold damage at this point, so we don't need that one. If you re-roll one, or if you re-roll, it will re-roll everything. You can't hold um, uh, uh, perks choices, unfortunately. So if you're thinking that you don't want uh, one and you want to keep the other three, unfortunately, you're stuck with those. That's just how the game works. So keep that in mind when you're looking for certain things or trying to fish for certain things. Making uh, yourself you know the most op you can you're not going to have access to um that like we'll say full and total freedom to just spin and pick the ones that you want it, it comes in batches of four same thing with your other perks they come in batches of three let's spin through that All right, we're not going to get our dodge off we're going to go right through the middle um let's upgrade thor's wrath I want to get an upgrade for the dagger because believe it or not the dagger is probably what's doing the most amount of damage for us right now because it's a hundred percent accurate it will always hit enemies no matter what it's always it says random but it's it's random target so it's always going to hit whatever it throws at it's always going to hit so that one i think is really going to be doing the most damage and you do get actually a pretty good readout at the end of the your run with um seeing what did the most damage what worked what didn't work what you were most reliant on so I think that's a really good readout. Me being a numbers guy, I do like it. Uh, dash amount, definitely. Collection rate, all of these, all of these. We will take all of them. We will take all of them. I don't know if in my skill tree I had a perk still selected where if I pick all the runes, I get bonus movement speed permanently. Um, maybe I did, but maybe I don't. I don't remember. Oh, I don't want to pick that up. I wanna... So those golden apples are health. Um, we don't want to pick those up too early. We want to make sure we're holding on to... Uh, those for the boss fight you do get bosses in this i don't know how many ultimately are in this like i said i've only played for about an hour i've only seen one boss uh let's do the spawn for the spears two spears on the ground is going to be huge i think um but uh yeah there's one boss he does have a board wipe for us uh to dodge uh he looks like master hand from um uh smash brothers if you know who i'm talking about uh so just when you see him, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I get it now. So, yeah, he's definitely you still have to be careful. Uh, the first time I beat him, I had a very odd build that I did not expect to carry me. And it did. So it just kind of goes to show you never think that you're fully beaten until you're actually dead. Keep fighting the good fight. Keep winning. Keep striving for more. We're going to try our best to get there so you guys can see him. I don't see I've never not gotten to him on the on a run. So that's uh, some good food for thought as well for if you're gauging if this game might be too difficult for you um oh also there is a gradient for uh upgrades like the gold you know uh, the the tiering of uh, you know white is common blue is uncommon uh red is rare and orange is legendary i'm gonna do all of these again 
because those are going to be that's going to be super helpful for us to continue to make sure we're dispatching these would be uh we'll say i don't know what they are goblins and uh uh, uh I, I guess valkyries i don't know what the winged guys are the the angels maybe but they wouldn't be in nordic lore so i don't know quite what they are um i would like to see a bestiary just to get a little bit more lore into the game but again you don't really need that to smash heads in you just have fun with it but that's just me maybe wanting a little bit more from the game in general all right get out of here move spin through here so like i said and like you hopefully saw there the dodge is critical you absolutely need it um i want to make sure that i do call out these other abilities that you're seeing here like i said there's probably about i want to say seven to eight different abilities under each of the trees that you can go with for this maybe even a little bit more i might be underselling it there might be a total of 10 in each tree and there's always the various upgrades that you get for those as well. So don't think... Oh, I just walked into that guy. Just walked into that guy. So don't think that there's like, you know, only like a small s smattering of abilities in the Origins. No, they've actually got quite a few. They actually really do. Uh, I would like to get an upgrade for our health regen. That is a, a thing in here. And it is really helpful for uh, your long longevity for playing the game um, in a given run. Getting a health upgrade really will make the difference between success and failure because those heal apples, while uh, they persist on the ground, they are not overly abundant uh, in the later uh, sessions of the game or sections of the game. So we're going to just keep on keeping our head on a swivel, doing the things that we need to do, getting through these hordes of baddies. We're going to we're quickly approaching the boss, though. You'll see a couple of messages where the air gets heavy. And a couple of things warning you about. Yep, there it is. The ancient power has awakened from its slumber. I've been too busy dodging fools to really read the over, uh, over text on the, the top of the screen, the banner there. All right, cool. Shock. We don't have... Well, you know what? Let's get the chill chance just to slow down some movement. Critical strike multiplier. Sure. Pick them all again. Might as well. And then when the boss comes through, I'm going to roll through the middle here and try and get one more level up. The cool thing about this game that I think really sets it apart, though, is the fact that these bosses feel really weighty and really important um, for your uh, overall, we'll say, uh, uh, play. They're not just like thicker versions of what you're fighting right now. They're not thicker versions of the fodder that you see. They're actually animated um, bosses that you can uh, really see on the screen and take up a good portion of the screen, as you'll see in a, in a few minutes here. So I think that that's a really cool mechanic for, for something that's looking to set its part uh, or stake its claim inside a... Oh, there's the health bar. You know it's ominous when the health bar comes in. There he is. So you get the reference for being Master Hand, right? Two hands that do different abilities. So let me get... I don't want to walk into that bullet. They were leading me. All right, cool. Uh, oh, we could have gotten a lightning explosion mine. Oh, that would have been great. I don't know if I want to get rid of this though yet. Uh, let's get the upgrade. Let's get the upgrade. All right, and let's uh, wear this guy down as much as we can. So the enemies stop spawning in huge waves when the boss uh, summons in. They still spawn. Still, they, You're still getting upgrades and things like that. The world level is still changing. You do have to be careful, though, because the boss will one-shot you. That uh, uh, zone denial ability he's doing with his left hand is an instant death actually it's not just zone denial like if you get touched by that you will die instantly so you want to make sure that you are keeping an eye on that left hand specifically the the right hand when it drops as you see it drops those aoe bullets it does and will uh a fair do a fair chunk of damage to you but you want to make sure that you are watching where it's uh dropping them more specifically so you can dodge them as best you can away now we're just going to stand right here and we're just going to come at me bro come on what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You got nothing. You got nothing. I'll swing at you. See? There. Okay. Oh, that's that's timing up to, to hit. We want to move. So like I said... Oh! Almost walked right into the instant death. So like I said, we're kind of just whittling away this guy. This build is not um, super damage uh, oriented. The other one that I would recommend you pick if you want something like that is a risk reward build with the flame breath. Uh, that is a lot of fun and a very big risk if you want to take that build go ahead be my guest It was a lot of fun to play I was lighting fools on fire all over the place and I was um, Freezing them because I had two separate breath weapons 
but uh, yeah, it got real risky when I walked into the fray. So whittle this guy down. Oh, the, the hand is coming down. World level increase, and we'll just swing our sword, finish this guy up. Uh, we don't have cold damage, piercing damage. Let's reroll this one. The reroll cost does get higher every time. Uh, yeah, we'll take all of this, actually. There we go. Perfect. And get the damage up. There we are. Cool. We got a little bit of health regen going. Now we're going to get ourselves out of this corner because I do not want to get boxed in. Right there. Come around outside here. We're just swinging away. Chipping away at this guy's health. All right, come on. Drop it. Drop the hammer. There we go. And then drop the AoE. Thankfully, the AoE doesn't really... um. Uh, track the AoE hand doesn't really track onto us that much. We're working through it though. Right, get this down right here. Nice. Now we'll do this. Almost there. Almost there. Like I said though, it feels like they have presence. It feels like they're not just thicker versions of the the fodder that you've been killing. Oh, I took that one right in the face. They feel like they have, uh, you know, an actual meaning and a mechanic that you have to understand and navigate. So that's where I think this game really does differentiate itself. I'm not going to try and DPS through that. I don't think I have it. So we'll, we'll take this right here. You can, in theory, farm this guy up if you want to. Totally up to you. I wouldn't recommend doing it. Um, let's do the thunder. Let's do the thunder. All right. Keep on going. And now it's just back to business as usual. Now, I'm probably going to tank the run here, just so you guys can see a different flavor. That is the only boss, like I said, that I've run into. Uh, and I've gotten to this end several times with... Um, or I got past him uh, once, and I've gotten through him... I've gotten to him, we'll say, four to five different times. So it seems like he's the only one that's currently available in the Origins. I would like to see them beef that up, you know, put like two or three separate bosses in there, make it, make it a little bit more interesting to see the concept of what they're looking for with what they want the, the bosses to feel like and how they want them to act and the different ideas they're currently kind of playing around with. But for a game like this that's free, it honestly, you can't go wrong with trying it out and seeing if it's something that tittles your uh, pickle or something like that. Yeah, I know what I said. That's that's a, that's a saying that my dad used to say. I don't know why I used to say it. Now I've picked it up. I've become my father. That's, you know, that's where I think I might end this video. I think I might commit Sabaku right now so you can kind of see the progression mechanics. All right, here we go. Come at me. Come on. Come on. You can do it. I know you can. There we are. And then they just go back off into the forest. All right, so... Oh, no, Okay. The the spear did the damage, but you can see the, the throwing daggers were next in line. Pretty pretty good. No, actually the Thor's Wrath. Okay, the, the lightning. Alright, so it was up there, top three. Not what I expected, but you can see your sword slash does the lowest amount of damage, so don't be relying on that. There might be things in the skill tree that augment that, and here you go. This is how you get your upgrade. We just got one point that we can play around with. We can wishlist the game. We can try again. We can go back. Let's go to the menu. And let's try something fun here. Let's do this. Instead of doing anything in the utility tree, let's take everything out of the utility tree. We have seven points to play with. I don't think I have anything else in any other tree. Right. Okay. Let's go into the fire tree. Let's see what we can do here. Healing triggers, 1% fire ability, fire damage increase. So I have to go up here. Do this one there, and then ignite. Gain 10% ignite every fire ability. So what I'm going to do is I'll drop attack movement speed, bleed chance. Let's get rid of the bleed chance, and let's put that one in there. All right, we'll try that build next time. Hope to see you there. Busy Gamer Dad showing you guys a free game that's a fun bullet hell, bullet heaven kind of game. Asgard Fall Origins. Like, comment, subscribe. Pick this game up for yourself. Let me know if you like it. We'll see you in the next episode of our session gameplay series where we take an episode every or we take a look at a game for three episodes, 20 to 30 minutes. Hope to see you in the next one where we try a full on fire build later.